Hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to always give him the thanks, to always give him the praise, and always give him the glory. Today is the day that the Lord has made. And I am so glad, so glad to be a part of it and rejoice in it. Today is the day that God is making a way for someone. I don't know who it is, but God is about to provide. God is about to show up and show out. God is about to heal. God is about to deliver. God is about to restore. God is about to do something that you adopt, that you ever would imagine that he's going to do in your life right now today. Because of your faithfulness, my sisters, because of your faithfulness, my brothers, and we all serve an awesome God. We serve a powerful God, a mighty God, a big God, an awesome God. He is so faithful, so amazing, so loving, so caring. He is our everything. We can't do it without Jesus. We can't make it without Jesus. We can't comprehend without Jesus. We need him each and every day in our life. That's why I'm always encouraging all my sisters and brothers to always praise him. Not because you want something, not because you're in need of anything, but you want to praise Jesus for who he is. You want to praise him because you're in love with him. You want to praise him because he's your father. You want to praise him because he's your friend. You want to praise him because he's your protector. You want to praise him because he's your provider. You want to praise him because he's your healer. You want to praise him because he's your, he's, he's your deliverer. You want to praise him. Because he is your everything, my sisters. You want to praise him because he's your everything, my brothers. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And he is so worthy, hallelujah, so worthy to be praised. Amen? Amen. Just like praise is an everyday thing, repentance is also an everyday thing too. Because we all fall short every day. We all make mistakes every day. We all fall short of God's grace and mercy. Every day. Every last one of us. There's not one person on this planet called Earth can say that we're perfect. Because we're not. So, you can't keep it real and be honest with Jesus. You can't keep it real and be honest with nobody. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be straight up with you. There's no way that you can do it. So I need my keep it real brothers. I need my keep it real sisters to join with me in repentance right now. Heavenly Father God, I boldly ask of you in your holy precious mighty name right now today, Father God, to please forgive me, all my sisters, all my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we done wrong in the sight of your eyes. Father God, please forgive me, my sisters and my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our heart. That was not part of you. Father God, please forgive me, my sisters and my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our mind that was not part of you. Please forgive us today, Jesus. Wash us clean right now today, Jesus. Purify us through your blood right now today, Jesus. Wash us as white as snow right now today, Jesus. Oh, Father God, we thank you, Father God, for forgiving us. We thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. We thank you, Father God, for this clean new slate. We thank you, Father God, for this new opportunity. We thank you, Father God, for this chance of a lifetime. We thank you, Father God, that you heard us. We thank you, Father God, that you came through for us, God, even though you didn't have to, but you did anyway. And we want to give you the thanks for it. We want to give you the praise for it. And we want to give you the glory. And Father God, there's one thing I got to keep it real with you. And I have to be honest with you. And I got to tell you how I feel about you. I can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify it by shout out your holy name the way I do. 
do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart out to you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. 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 Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. I want to talk about the day that you ain't going back to the way how you used to be. And basically what I'm saying, my sisters, and basically what I'm saying, my brothers, a lot of us had went through that before. We was dead inside. We was dead physically, mentally, socially. We was dead. The only thing that was keeping us alive was the word of God. That was the only thing that was keeping us alive. We was dead at the jobs that we was at. We was dead and miserable in the relationship that we was in. We was dead and frustrated in the marriage that we was that we was in. We was dead and frustrated because how our life was looking. And we knew, we knew we was dead. But we kept walking around with those gray clothes on. We kept walking around with that stench on us. We kept walking around with that smell on us. Wondering how long that we was going to continue to walk around in those gray clothes. How much longer that we was going to continue to walk around dead in the inside. Knowing that we was crying for help. Knowing that we needed some help so bad. But we was dead in the inside. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Because it was a time, my sister, it was a time, my brothers, I was dead in the inside and I knew it. And I felt so uncomfortable. I felt so uncomfortable mentally, physically, emotionally. I walked around with a stench on me. I walked around with a smell on me because it was that dead smell of me not being happy. I thought it was, but I was putting on the show. I thought I was, but I had that mask on. I thought I was, but I was fronting. But in the inside, I was dead. Everything about me was asleep. But my spirit, that was keeping me going. It was the spirit and the word of God that kept me moving day in and day out. And I think that if I didn't have the spirit in me, I would have been gone. But it was the word of God. And the spirit that was moving through me, that kept me breathing through the through the breathing tubes. It was the word of God that kept me full with the food. It was his word that kept me, kept me thirsty. That's why I kept coming back for more and more. But in the midst of all that, I was dead. You was dead, my sisters. You was dead, my brothers. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You was unhappy. It's a lot of times when we are unhappy, we put on the show, we put on the front, we put on the mask around people. But deep down inside of you, you know that you are dead inside because you know what you are going through is not you. You know deep down inside of you, you saying, this ain't me. I ain't never allow myself to look like this. I ain't never allowed myself to go through this. I never allowed myself to go through this kind of pain and suffering. I never allowed myself to walk around to look like this and keeping myself up. What's going on with me? And what we was doing, we kept burying ourselves day in and day out. We kept burying ourselves on top of the hurt, on top of the pain, on top of the, that we was not unhappy. But we get around certain people, we'll smile like we're good. We get around our friends, pretend like we're all right. We go see our boyfriends, our girlfriends, our spouses, knowing good well we're unhappy in the position that we're in. We're not happy to be with them, but we're putting on the show. We're putting on the front. And how much longer 
are you going to continue to put on that show, my sisters? How much longer are you going to continue to put on that show, my brothers? How much longer are you going to continue to walk around those gray clothes? How much longer are you going to continue to walk around smelling funky and sour? Come on, somebody. Somebody know what I'm talking about. You want to sleep on yourself. You want to sleep on yourself. And it's easy to do. It's so easy to go to sleep on yourself and you only realize how deep the sleep that you're in. You don't realize it. Then you look at yourself in the mirror you're like, is this really me? You come to a point that you don't even recognize yourself anymore. That's how deep the sleep that you're in because you're unhappy. But sooner than later, those gray clothes have to come off. Sooner than later, those gray clothes have to come off. And we sit there unhappy in this position, in this predicament, and we expect Jesus to come right there on the, on the dime. We expect Jesus to come right there on the rescue. But he's not in the rush to come save us like that as we expect him to. Sometime he take his time because he knows what he's going to do. He knows how he's going to get that smell off you. He knows how he's going to take those gray clothes off on you. But we must continue to be patient and wait on Jesus. I had to wait on him. I had to wait on my sisters. I had to wait on my brothers because I knew what I was de dealing with and what I was going through. I knew it wasn't me. I had fell asleep a long time ago, not behind the wheel neither. I fell asleep on myself. And when you fall asleep on yourself, you walk around dead in the inside. When you fall asleep on yourself, you can't even imagine yourself looking the way that you're looking or going through what you're going through when you fall asleep on yourself. That smell come on you. That stench come on you. But nobody realizes it, recognizes it. But you, but you, you're the only person that see it. You're the only person that realize it. And you look at yourself day in and day out. And you tell, you tell, you tell yourself, oh, it's going to get better today. I know it's going to get better soon. And the more you tell yourself that, does it really get better? No. It get worse. It get worse. It get worse. Because you're still in that position of who you with and who you're surrounding yourself with, and you know that you are not happy. And when you're not happy in a certain situation, you fall asleep somehow, some way. You walk around depressed. You walk around hurt. We all wear that mask on our face, pretending like we're okay. But deep down inside of us, we are hurt, we are lonely, and we did in the inside. Every last one of us has been dead in the inside. But Jesus knew this friend of his had fallen asleep. Now this is Jesus' friend, this is Jesus' homeboy. This is this is this is this is, this is Ace Boone Coon. He knew this man had fallen asleep, and he knew this man was dead. But Jesus was not in the rest to go see him. He was not in the rush to go save him. So if Jesus was not in the rush to go save his partner, his homeboy, his ace boom coon, what makes you think he's going to be in the rush to come save you? He was patient because Jesus knew at the right time how he's going to do it and when he's going to do it. And you will see the miracle from Jesus. If you believe, my sisters, if you believe, my brothers, because I saw, hallelujah, the miracle when God removed those gray clothes off me, that stench and that funk and that smell off me. Now, I promise myself I'll never go back looking like that again. i never go back looking like that again. I don't know who God is about to talk to. I don't know who God is about to preach to, but someone's going to tell themselves today, I will never go back looking like that again, being unhappy, being dead in the inside, 
looking like a hot mess, being being um being miserable, being lonely, being depressed. You got to tell yourself right now. Because once God deliver you and he removed those gray clothes, you got to tell yourself there's no way that I'm going back looking like that again, being broke. When when the the same busted clothes and shoes that you don't have for the last three or four years. Not able to do this, not able to take care of yourself, make sure to keep yourself up. Come on, somebody, I got to keep it real. I got to be honest. You got to tell yourself, I ain't going about looking like that again. I was dead one time, I refused to bury myself again. I was there one time. I refused to walk around with those gray clothes. I was there one time. I refused to walk around with that smell on me. I was there one time. I refused to walk around with that sour smell on me. I refused in the mighty name of Jesus to go out like that ever again. Amen. Amen. So let's turn our Bibles to John 11. And we're going to read verse 11 through 12. And we're going to finish off at 40 through 43. That's John 11, verse 11 through 12. And we're going to finish off at 40 through 43. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. So he's telling you, he know that you went to sleep. He know that you are walking around dead. He know that you got that smell on you. He know that you are funky. He know that you're unhappy. He know all of that. He know that you walk around looking like you dead. He knows this. But he's telling you, he's giving you his word. He's giving you his promise to let you know that he's coming to see you. That he's gonna come holler at you, but he gonna come, he will come see you and holler at you on his own time. Not your time, but his time. Amen? Amen. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking on his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So he's telling you, I'm coming to see you. I know what's going on. I know what's happening. I will come. Amen? Amen. So let's go to verse 40. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, he's talking about you, my sisters. He's talking about you, my brothers. If you believe, you will see what? The glory of God. When I believe, I saw the glory of God. Do you believe, my sisters? Do you believe, my brothers? Because that's the only way. That you're going to see the glory of God. That's the only way those gray clothes going to come off. That's the only way that death smell going to come off you. That's the only way that you're going to see a miracle. If you believe. Faith without work is dead. So do you believe? Amen. So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you. I think we just said, Father, I thank you. So Jesus already thanking his father before he even took place. He said, I know that you already done this. Good God on my look how powerful that word is. He said, Father, I thank you. Before he even took place, Jesus had enough faith to know that his father already came through. Jesus already had enough faith that his father already came to deliver. Jesus already had enough faith that his father's going to do the more than enough. He had enough faith. Amen. Father, I thank you that what you heard me, I knew that you will always hear me. Even when you walk around dead, even when you walk around unhappy, even though that you walk around with that smell and stench, you got to thank Jesus. Say, Jesus, I know that you hear me. I know that you always around me. I know that you always protected me. I know that you always covered me. I know that you always holding my hand. I know that you will never leave me nor forsake me. I know that you will always be there for me. So Jesus, I want to thank you because I know that you're going to come through. Jesus, I want to thank you because I know you will make a way out of no way. Jesus, I want to thank you because I know that you will never do me wrong. Jesus, I want to thank you because I know, I know. 
that you hear me. Amen. Amen. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and his feet wrapped with stripes and linen and cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off those gray clothes and let him go. He said, take off those gray clothes and let him go. Basically, say, take off that pain, take off that hurt, take off that suffering, take off that, 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 that unhappiness, take off that depression, take off that suicidal that's going in your mind. Take it off. And don't you dare put it back on. Take that mask off. Don't you dare put it back on. Don't put them same clothes back on that you had on three years ago. Don't put those same shoes on that you put on three years ago. Don't put that same mask on that you had on two years ago. Don't you wear that same hairdo that you had two years ago. Don't you wear that same hairstyle that you had a year and a half ago. Don't you dare put that back on. He said, take them off. Don't you dare put them back on. When he told me, he said, LT, take those gray clothes off. And I took them off. I stepped into a new man. I step into a new person. And he said, son, that you dare put those back on. I say, Jesus, you ain't never got to worry about that. I ain't never going back looking like that ever again. There's no way I'm ever going to put myself through that ever again. There's no way I'm going to ever deal with that kind of pain ever again. There's no way I'm going to sit there in front with that mask on ever again. I can't go out like that no more. I won't do it. I don't know who this word for today. I don't know who this powerful message for today. But God said, don't put them back on no more. Don't you go out like that. You know exactly who you are. You know God is talking to you personally right now. He's talking to your heart right now today, my sisters. He is talking to your heart right now today, my brothers. You know who he's talking to. And if you know God is talking to you personally on this one-on-one, you can give Jesus a comment or you can hit the like button or you can just talk to Jesus person and say, Jesus, I know that you was talking to me. I know that this word is for me. I know that this message is for me. But Jesus, you ain't got to worry about that. Once the grave clothes, once the grave clothes come off, I ain't never going to put it back on again. Amen? Amen. And if you believe it and receive it, give God some thanks and praise and glory in the house of the Lord. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. And I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, by us praying this simple little prayer, that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, or leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is withers.alt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always put him first place. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus, which is the author and the perfecter of your faith. Always choose faith over fear. Always continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Always continue to pray for your fellow sisters and brothers. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my fellow sisters and brothers. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. I'm serving in the CLT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.